Hey everyone, Happy New Year again. I guess I already said that in last week's video, but I think it's probably worth saying again. Um, <clears throat> Happy New Year. I had a great New Year's Eve. I was with my second family, as you know, from last week's video and um, did some snowshoeing. It was really amazing. And in fact, today's Sunday, I was out snowshoeing this morning with my friend Don, which again was amazing. Such a great way to start a Sunday. Um, so anyways, Happy New Year for the second time. Um, this past week, as I'm moving in, it's been a tough one, as we all know. Um, not a lot of joy in some of the stuff we're seeing in the news. Um, and I don't expect there to be joy in everything. That's not the point of, of this website and my book. Um, but I was sitting down watching a movie, and that's what prompted this, uh, this vlog today. Um, the movie is called The Boys in the Band. It's, it stars Jim Parsons, who is Sheldon from The Big Bang Theory. For those of you that uh, watch The Big Bang Theory, you know who Sheldon is. Jim Parsons was a character in the movie. It's kind of a downer of a movie. Um, this is a little bit of a tangent too, but this was improbable joy for the week. I got a FaceTime call from an ex-boyfriend of mine named John. In, he lives in the Omaha Council Bluffs area. So amazing to... Um, get that random out of the blue call from someone that I haven't talked to in probably a year. Um, and he FaceTimed me. He didn't just call me. We literally got to see each other. Um, and that was so unexpectedly joyful. And I love that. Um, but I digress. It's a little bit of a tangent. Um, but we were talking about, he and I were talking about this movie. And so I thought, I'm going to sit down and watch it. So the, the movie explores the dynamics of relationships, which I think is really interesting. I think that's always a fascinating topic to, you know, sort of dive into, into in a movie. Um, and this one is, it's, like I said, a little bit of a downer, but it's good. So I have to read you the quote. Um, I can't remember this quote, but it was a quote that Jim Parsons, his character in the movie, said at one point in the movie. And this is the quote. I'm going to read it now. He said... You think it's just nifty how I've always flitted from Beverly Hills to Rome to Amsterdam. I'm here to tell you the only place that I've ever been happy is on the plane. Run, charge, run, buy, borrow, make, spend, run, squander, run, bag, run, 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 waste, waste, waste. And why? Unquote. That for me was like this amazing quote. He's talking about his life and people see him and they see this amazing guy who's running from Rome to Paris, to Amsterdam, to New York, to Los Angeles, and he has all these things and he's shopping and he's buying and he looks really amazingly happy. But he's like, the only place I've ever been happy is on the plane. And I thought that is just incredible. So it took me back to a moment in my own life when after my third round of chemo, this is maybe a little more information than you want, but after my third round of chemo, I kind of thought I was going to die, right? It's like I knew I was going to beat this all along, but there was this little spark of I might just die. And so one of the things that I always wanted, and again, I, I'm a little embarrassed to say this but it, because it sounds very shallow, um, I wanted a BMW. Like I just thought if I could have a BMW, that would show the world that I was successful, right? That was the thing that, and for as long as I can remember, I've wanted that. And so I bought a BMW convertible. And long story short, I didn't die. And so at some point, that accumulation of stuff started to feel overwhelming. I had two cars, I live in North Dakota. I have a car that I can only drive four months out of the year and it sits parked in my garage for eight months. It seemed silly and wasteful. And that moment for me came and I had this epiphany that I needed to downsize. I needed less. Um, you know, we learn from society from a very young age to acquire stuff. This is the mark of success, right? The things that we have make us successful. If we, we can show the world that we're successful by the things that we have. I talk to my nieces and nephews and these young kids and they all talk about what they want. And I'm not suggesting that's not normal. I get it. That is kind of normal. But what I want to hear them talk more about, and I want us to encourage them to talk about is, who do they want to be? What changes do they want to see in the world? Um, what kind of an influence do they want to be as a person to other people? Those are the things that matter. 
Those are the things that we should be encouraging children and teenagers to talk about and adults because we have acquired and acquired and acquired. Um, so this happens, you know, when we acquire stuff, you know, it gives us more time to think about what's important. Um, so when we acquire less, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not rambling. When we acquire less stuff, I think it opens up a space for us to think about what kind of people we want to be. So that's my challenge. Let's, let's maybe not continue this quest for more things and start thinking about who we want to be. And maybe I'm just rambling now, but I'm always rambling, but that kind of aligns with this last week that we had. What kind of a country do we want to be? What kind of a people do we want? How do we want to interact with each other? And if we stop acquiring stuff, maybe we can free up our, our space to think a little more about that. Now, Side note, I still like stuff. I'm not going to apologize for liking stuff because I love that car. That car was amazing. Do I want that car again? No. Do I think that car was a sign of my success? No. Um, it's not how I want to be measured. Um, I still like stuff and I'm not, I don't want to apologize for that. And I don't want anyone else to apologize for that. Things can make us happy as I've said time before. So, I'm not trying to shame anybody into having nice things, buying, that's an important part of existence. You only live once, right? But let's keep it in check. Um, and let's have the conversations about things beyond acquisition and beyond material stuff, because that is where the real joy happens. That for me is where I find love and where I find joy and that connection that we have with other people in talking about who we want to be is really, really amazing. So I think I'm a little long today and I'm sorry, but I'm also early. So now you got the rest of the night to watch this because I'm going to get this shot out to you real quick. Like, so love, joy. If you want to chat again, I'd love to zoom with you. Go to my website, click on my calendar and Let's meet. I want to see you face to face and have a conversation. Much love. Love, love, love.